Welcome back Clues Bell on the 19th of January 2021 and today I just want to focus on the Netflix earnings. Is it a season kickoff earning? Netflix came in, they smashed it They're up 12% just now. So today I just want to go through a breakdown detail for those owning Netflix or those intending to jump on the Netflix stock. Let me break this down for you so you can make a decent decision. So Netflix earnings, how did it actually do? In fact, they missed their EPS. EPS expected 1.39. They missed it. They actually hit 1.19. In fact, it's the lowest EPS amount all the four quarters, and they missed it. But still, their global uh, addition to the subscribers have grown 6.47 million expected. They grew 8.5 million, which was very, very generously good. The revenue expected 6.62. They slightly scraped through 6.64. It's because recently they've increased their price and that really helped towards the last few months of people uh, paying. People just paying up, paying up. Netflix is uh, a definite subscription in the household, not just in America now, not just in Europe, but also expanding in Asia because of the great content, original content they produce every single time. So um, what is it? What, what else are they telling? Why is it up even though they missed the EPS? So there's two key things that they really like, the investors really like is the cash buyback, okay? Cash buyback means they've got excess cash flows and now they're ready to buy back the shares. And the other thing they mean by cash buyback means they do not have to do external refinancing again. External refinancing meaning they have issue shares or they have to issue bonds just to raise capital, you know, to do new movies, to do new setup, to do new expansion. They have stopped that. So the cash flow is coming to the point it's sustainable. So as you all know, I use Simple Graham's Intrinsic Calculator to see what the stock price is now. Is it worth investing at this point? So since we've got an EPS rating of Q1, Q2, Q2, Q3, and Q4, you add them together 6.09, okay? 6.09. And the growth revenue for 2019 to 2020 is about 24% if you take the two revenue uh, difference, 24%. So 24% is 6.09 using uh, the calculator with the link below if you want to use it yourself, link below. And it comes to work out of $504 per share, which is exactly what's in today. Today I think it's about 501, 502. So they're actually spot on with the EPS, with the growth, with the revenue, spot on today's price. But now they've jumped up about 11% to 564. So investors are already pricing the cash buyback. Remember, if less shares out in the market, meaning that shares is more valuable, okay, the multiples is lower. So since you're all existing shareholders in Netflix, you know, Netflix is a good stock. If you hold it, I mean, long-term stock, top three stock that you want to hold, hold in big volume amount, Netflix is a stock you should hold. And remember, I know that folks have retired from Netflix stocks, okay? Folks have become millionaires with Netflix stocks. You've got Tesla millionaires, but before Tesla millionaires came out, they were Netflix millionaires. Okay, Netflix no showstopper. So what do you do? What do you do? So as as all I can say, if you look back since 2012, okay, 2012, 2013, every single year, Netflix has always yield a positive gain, except for one year, which is 2019. 2019, 2020, it was a bad year for investment. Actually, it fell. Netflix was about minus 5%. But in all the other eight, nine, years combined they've always been on the up so investing in netflix stocks you're always most likely the likelihood of one out of ten you lose but nine out of ten you'll be on a positive yield so if you're looking to include in the portfolio with a yield between five to fifteen percent or five to twenty percent depending on the year the netflix is for you but then we do have risk for Netflix as well. Netflix has got huge competition just now. You know, they've got a subscriber base of 203 million worldwide, the top one, you know, the top dog, 203. Disney has done it in less than 18 months, so top at 87 million. So with another one or two years, if Disney is pumping a lot of revenue into it, Disney might supersede uh, in terms of subscriber growth or even match. That's why investors like Disney's um, time scale where potentially they could grow even double in the next two years. But then Netflix has established themselves. Netflix has said that they're going to issue a new movie every single week and also heaps of season collection, original Netflix um, shows are being renewed. And now all the fan, there have been lots of huge fan base in different movies like Gambit, you know, Bridgerton and many other Emily's in Paris. These are all still going strong. So. 
what my intent where i'm coming from is the subscribers netflix will not leave but for now there's no concern netflix investors just hold for 2021 and see where you go don't expect a 50 percent growth but you know if you get between 5 to 15 or 15 to 20 i think that's a good growth rate for netflix it's one of those stocks where you buy on the dip it's one of the stocks you can hold comfortably you go to bed top three stocks huge volume you can own 50 100 200 grand worth of netflix stocks and you'll be absolutely comfortable for this starting to slow down growth but steady growth so this is me for netflix i think it's worth talking about netflix because this season has opened with great positive sentiment if investors are plowing to pay for future value i think this will hopefully reflect and share on other um, stocks as well that's coming up like apple nvidia amd microsoft uh, amazon so positive hopefully this positiveness will rub on all the other stocks as well okay this is me for closing well today hopefully to see you in the next one and also tomorrow